Good morning, traders. Chris Bess here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Thursday, November 5th. Okay, uh, first of all, apologies. Uh, in several of the earlier videos, uh, I believe uh, yesterday and, and definitely the strategy session before the election, I had mentioned uh, the FOMC J. Powell policy announcement as being yesterday at 2 p.m. And of course, that was wrong. That that uh, time is today at 2 p.m. So apologies. I got my days mixed up and that information was obviously wrong. So we've got Jay Powell today at um, the policy. The written announcement is at 2 p.m. And then he'll, he'll have a presser at uh, 2.30 and then answer questions for an hour, hour and a half, whatever he feels like doing. And then tomorrow we've got the October jobs report at 8.30. So that sets the stage for today. Uh, I'm running a little bit behind today, but uh, I do want to go through a few things and, and then get this video out to you. Um, we had another strong overnight session in the futures. I've got uh, SPY or ES up about 1.75%, NQ, the Qs, 2.5%, and then uh, IWM up about 1%. So we've got um, gaps building on gaps at this point. Uh, now that the election is over, there's been a, a release of pressure, and the VIX has come off another uh, $3.00 and is down around uh, 20, 26, 25 area right now. So vol is really coming out of the system quickly. Um, uh, we were up at 38 handle before the election and we've already lost 10 or $12. So that volatility is really coming out and that'll make any kind of directional option trades much more affordable and of course if vol picks back up again that will be adding value to any you know open option positions that we might have from an implied volatility standpoint so um we'll have to see you know if we've got some good setups that we can take uh starting with the spy two hour spy is set to open right around uh, 350, 349.50 to 350 area. If you had held any open positions from last night, the first thing I would be doing is raising up, either taking profit by rolling up to a higher strike or moving your stop up to just below 349.50. You can see that there's a, a ledge of support here, but, and we may build on gains or trade mostly sideways into Jerome Powell. But if I was sitting on, you know, if you had gotten long yesterday morning and it held overnight, you've got a nice gain here of $8 or so. So I would be I would be making sure that your plan includes getting paid and not let them take that away at some point with gap backfills that uh, bring price down, either because of Powell or just general, you know, market trading. Let's look at the 30 minute chart. <clears throat> what I've done is drop in a fair, you know, a fairly well defined up channel here on the 30 minute. You can see we've got touches along the top and bottom, so it's pretty well defined. Now, of course, today we'll have another gap and price will open very close to the top of the channel. So there's going to be some vulnerability this morning and into the afternoon because of these gaps. So be aware of that and uh, we'll see how how it trades i'm expecting 
you know, some consolidation at some point. It doesn't have to be a major pullback or anything, but I don't think the, you know, the 2% gap ups are going to go on forever. We'll get to a point where we're overbought and I will check those oscillators this morning and see where we're at and, uh, and certainly pass that information along. Cues are set to open around 294. You can see that we've got a, uh, a ledge here at around uh, 293. Same idea. This ascent is a lot steeper. You can tell the, the, um, the SPY channel was more, I'll say, reasonable. This is really, really steep. And if I had gotten long yesterday and if you held overnight, I would, you know, same thing, make sure you get paid by rolling up your strikes and or rolling up your stops to just below 293 and, you know, exit those positions if you get the sense that they're going to come back and fill the gap. So make sure you get paid on, um, on that overnight hold. Here you can see the initial push was met with some consolidation and now we've got the gap up to this area in here and I've got a target above at 297.50 and I believe the old high was uh, right at 300 so we may be on a, on a run to test that that prior high and then we'll see if if uh you know we can break out to blue sky territory or do some backing and filling iwm certainly the the iwm value growth trade has come off the boil uh, it's been underperforming since the election with lower chances of a massive stimulus package that may even when it comes be moderated in size but also may not may not arrive until first quarter so i have iwm set to open right around 162 and our overhead levels we've got an uh this gap fill at 163 and then we've got an additional level of resistance at 164 but then above 164 we've got an open path to 167.50 now that's not marked on here but that was a prior high and above 167.50 then it's on to the low 170s now yesterday it was interesting you know, we had talked about coming down to test this gap and then it worked its way up and went into the gap, didn't get very far and then reversed. Now at the time, I had had a trend line drawn from back here, the prior high, coming down where at these levels price met resistance. And I had not extended that line yesterday. But when I started looking at it, I just extended it and lo and behold, it was right where price found a problem uh, yesterday. So with price back up at 162 in the pre-market, it's right there at this trend line. So we'll see if price gets, you know, rejected and pulled back or if it can go ahead and fill this gap to 163 and then make a move towards 164. I still think that anything above 160 is a long and everything is time, time frame dependent, of course. If you're in weekly options that expire tomorrow, you're not going to want to sit idly by while this thing pulls back to check 160 again. But if you're out 
you know, out in time then long against 160 is fine or even if you got long yesterday you're fine just make sure you put a you know your stop is at 160 because anything moving below 160 is going to open up that 158 again so be aware of that but getting back to the point value is struggling right now banks had a terrible time yesterday with the falling yields so we're going to want to see banks and some of these other value names pick up along with you know iwm if that value trade is going to re-emerge but right now it seems like everybody's piling back into growth with the fang names and uh, the cues in general more of the beta risk on type trades let's run through facebook and the rest of fang very quickly i have facebook set to open around 294 which will of course leave a big gap below and you'll want to go to your daily chart to uh find these upper levels but i think uh 300 was close to the old high may get a push up there but then watch your your big gap this morning on any move lower apple has jumped up in the pre-market to just really toggling right around 118 which was again a predefined level and that aligns with the uh, 618 retracement. So that's a key spot. Bulls definitely want to see 118 hold and a move above this retracement area because this would be a, if there's going to be a reversal. It would be right in here at the 618 retracement if it dropped back down below 118 and then filled the gap back down to 115 then you know it would look like a rejection here at the 618 with a reversal underway now i think that's going to set up as a nice trade if you're dialed in on apple if you see a push above 118 and then a drop back down below into the gap you can be short against 118 and see if you get that quick three dollar move to fill the overnight gap that would be a really nice trade to start your day if if you get it and if you were long i would be I would be doing just what we've said if you're if you want to stay long you've got to roll up your strikes you've got to get paid for that overnight risk that you took and you can't afford to let them uh, take it back at this point so make sure you get paid for your nice trade here this morning on the open tesla where do i got tesla Tesla's uh, still trapped. I have it at like 427 this morning. Trapped between support at 420 and resistance at 430. There won't be much of a, I mean, there'll be a little gap this morning, but it won't be, a, you know, a tremendous amount. I think, again, for today, the key levels remain 430 and 420. Anything above, above 430, you can look for 450 anything below 420 it's going to come back here to 410 and uh, any break below 410 i don't have it penciled in here but there's a gap that you can see that would take it back down towards you know 401 but it's got a nice trajectory right now 
and if the bulls can pop 430 great place to be long for a push to 450 microsoft i have it at uh, 222 so again big gap up to a well-defined level there'll be a gap below and you're going to want to if you were in it overnight take your profit roll up your strikes and then you can stay long against 221.50 and look for 225 and then up towards the old highs at 230 should you know should we keep going but a pullback below 221.50 would be a warning flag and likely a gap fill back down to the 217 level Amazon I have it at 3310 this morning so it's gapped up about $60 if it you know if it still holds there by the open this uh, 3300 is a good you know benchmark level for you you can stay long against 3300 and look for 3335 and then potentially 3400 up here but on any pullback below 3300 uh, potential for a you know $50 gap back fill back to 3250 and these I keep saying it and I guess I'll keep saying it as long as it works but these $50 increments have been working really really well throughout the, the range and uh, continue to lean on them and to focus on your execution of you know your entries your stop placement and identifying a target where you'll either want to roll your strikes or uh, take profit Google uh, continues into never never land i have it at 1795 so a gap up we're in blue sky i think you're going to have to you know if you're bound and determined to get into this you're going to have to just you know pick a candle and set a stop just below and hope that it keeps going but in the morning, just mark your gap, you know, your opening price, and then that can be that can be your level to shoot against the open. And then if it loses the opening range, you're probably looking at a gap fill, and then you know you can go the other way. But this this is a lot more dicey uh, a proposition because you are in blue sky there's been no material pullback i would really like to see you know a 38 percent or 50 percent fib pullback and then you've really de-risked you know your long entry instead of you know taking a taking a stab at it out here in space with nothing to shoot against netflix I don't have that one marked as to where it is in the pre-market but we can see here the levels are very clear anything above 505 you're looking for a $20 move to fill this gap to 525 and anything below 505 down to 494 is in no man's land and then below 494 I think you can look for 480 so these ranges have been well defined and you know if you're interested in trading those just set your alarms at those levels and then you won't miss say you know a gap entry or or, or a breakdown whatever whatever way it goes but PPO and RSI are still rising so that's going to favor uh, bullish outcomes from here there's no reason to believe that uh, you know an imminent rollover is about to occur 
I think it's more or less building this base here and then getting a breakout to fill the gap and then, you know, a run back up towards higher prices. Uh, TAN, solar ETF. From what I can tell in the pre-market, it's set to open back in this range at around 72. So, any kind of back touch of one, or excuse me, any kind of back touch of 67.50 would be a nice long entry with a goal of getting back up to 77.50. And then any break below 67.50 would be a place to uh, get out of any uh, long position you might have taken. XRT did not feel it yesterday. I still got this 53 penciled in as a place to take a look at a long. Now, this morning, we may get that pop above, and then we can decide, or you can decide if you want to get long here. But that would be a recapture of the original breakout and would have price above all the moving averages. And you'd likely see PPO curling up right here at the zero line, which is a um, a bullish move. Uh, lastly, let's uh, take a quick look at gold. I saw that up this morning on futures around $1,925. We may get that pop today over 180. And if we do, and if it looks like it's going to hold, I think I want to try and uh, take a long here above 180 on the recapture of this level and with price then above all the moving averages which will act as support going forward it's not moving in a in a, you know in an and impulsive manner but a breakout is a breakout and you know, we, we would have a decent entry here at 180 with a stop below, and then we can look for 186. And that, and that could be, that could be a, a trade where we can look out in time. I mean, not, you know, two weeks, but something out into December, uh, and even possibly January. If, if you want to go out that far, I don't see, uh, any problem with that and if the dollar continu continues to get trashed that'll be a tailwind for gold so keep keep 180 in the crosshairs okay running a little bit behind today i'm scrambling a little bit i apologize if that was a uh, a little rushed for your taste but it should give you the key levels for this morning I'm going to be flipping through a lot of charts to kind of see where we're at on particular setups. We're still in the, you know, in the, in, and we are now in the post-election period. I don't think we can be totally lulled into, you know, now we're in Santa Claus rally mode and it's to the moon. The last couple of days have been a relief rally, definitely. And we'll have to see if it can hold the gains, but there's some sizable gaps below. So we've got to be cognizant of that. And Jay Powell has a way of saying things that the market doesn't take kindly to. I mean, at a certain point, I kind of feel sorry for the guy. It doesn't matter what he says. It seems like the market goes lower after whatever it is he says. So we'll see if that holds true today. And remember, the first move is fake. So you see a big green bar, you know, five seconds after the announcement. Be very skeptical of that and just, you know, hold your fire. It'll probably end up going the other way. So that's a rule of thumb. And... Uh, doesn't always hold, 
but it holds quite a bit of the time so uh, be ready for that and then we got of course the payrolls in the morning which has the potential to move the market it hasn't lately but you know we're going to have more and more information out on who won the presidency looks like you know biden's in the driver's seat but the lawyers are involved so who who knows how long it might take so all right the stage is set i hope you have a good day of trading today get off to a good start in the morning pick your spots focus on the levels lean on them work on your execution and if you pick objective levels either on the short side or the long side and then you get stopped out respect that stop you will not get materially hurt the way you get hurt is having big positions and ignoring stops and then you get behind the eight ball so objective trades trade smart trade small and i think you'll have a good start to the day if you're new to the channel and uh, like what you've heard uh, i'd really appreciate you subscribing and hitting the alarm bell so you get notified of new content please jump over in the show notes you'll find convenient links to the blog site where you'll find helpful articles to aspiring traders at all levels and a place to register for my content where you'll get not only an email each and every time I publish, but also an invite link to our trading room where you'll find a bunch of good guys and girls working on getting better at trading, sharing ideas and uh, having good all around camaraderie in the field of trading. So that's always a good thing. I hope to see you there sometime soon. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.